Uh, welcome back. Today we're going to do Ella's Ever After uh, by Dan Panosian, Giorgio Spalletta and Fabian Mascolo, issue number three by Boom Studios. Uh, yeah, let's dive right in. So we will continue where we left off. Uh, it says that Tweedledee and Tweedledum, that's how I call them, have caught uh, Alice and, well, her friends. And uh, they, they, they were having a party with drugs. And uh, these, these oh, I believe there are guards. I'm not sure what the, what their function is in this, this institute. But they are uh, say, hey, you need to be uh, taught a lesson. And they, you know, using liquid heroin. And they say, um, and you can see these faces that they are still under, I don't know, influence or something. And they said, no, no, don't, don't do that. But they are not really... How do you say? Their facial expression says, well, we don't mind. <laughs> Not entirely sure. But then here it goes. So they are um, getting injected. And we see this, this, well, they are drugged out. And then these guys says, hey, uh, Thomas, what now? Playtime? Splendid idea. Let's play doctor, shall we? <laughs> what? What do you mean with doctor? <laughs> Hand me those syringes. Uh, six of them, please. Um, but before they can do anything with that, um, Madam Ulva Hulda comes in and, um, well, she caught them in the act and he said, um, do you know who her father is? How much money is donating to our facility? But then they are, you know, feigning ignorance and says, well, what if you find her like this? And, um, but she, basically she warns her if they are, you know, doing stuff like that, that again, they are you know, being on the streets. And then they are blaming each other. <laughs> Fucking cowards. And um, she says, enough. Let's bring up it to the clinic. And they are being taken care of by, uh, I don't know, one of the nurses, I guess. And uh, then we go back to, um, well, to, let's say, Wonderland. Um, because, well, she's drugged. And I really love this art here. Uh, it's, it's very lovely. And normally I'm not a big fan of two artists working on one book. Because, I don't know, it just doesn't work for me. But in this case... Because this new artist, only when she has been, you know, uh, under the influence. Um, and the art looks good, by the way. So she's here and she's confused. And, and we meet with her. What, what's what they call it? Cheshire Cat? Is that how you say it? And um, he said, um, I haven't been uh, feeling like myself lately. I've been all over the place, I'm afraid. So the cat says, hey, maybe you should eat this. Um, she says, will it make me larger or smaller? Does it really matter? And then she's getting small, but she doesn't feel well. She says, I feel helpless. And he says, well, eat this. And uh, she says, oh, nice. Tastes like cinnamon. And she's growing large again. <laughs> it's all weird. And um, I mean, this looks good. Although it looks like her hair is a little bit clipping through, uh, through the ceiling, like in a game or something. No matter. <clears throat> but then... We have a conversation. She says, I feel like, don't, uh, like I don't fit anywhere. The cat says, when was the last time you did fit somewhere? Um, I suppose when mother was still alive, I used to find all sorts of wonderful places to fit. I would hide everywhere. Do tell, where would do you hiding? Honestly, I love watching my father work, but he preferred to work in private. I had to be clever. And then the cat says, You've been always been a clever girl. Too clever. And she said, what do you mean with that? And, he, and she says, no, nothing, nothing at all. Here, have a bite of this. And what will this do? She says, when do you care? <laughs> I love that because, well, Andy, yeah, she's using drugs all the time. Doesn't care about, uh, you know, consequences and stuff. Um, yeah, a little bit here and there. I like that. Um, maybe I should start caring. And what good would that do? You might worry all the time. A very unpleasant feeling. Trust me. And then he is transforming. Have I ever steered you wrong? Most of the time, yes. Well, it's for your own good. You never seem to know which way to go. Luckily for you, I know exactly where to go and how to get there. Then why did you send me the wrong way? The wrong way for you might be the right way for me. <laughs> That's dark. Um, so he turns into his her father. And I started wondering, okay, what happened between those two? Well, we have a flashback back when she was younger, when her mother was still alive and father was, you know, in love with uh, her mother, etc. 
And um, but he is a dentist practitioner, and it seems that back in those days they used porcelain teeth somehow for rich patients. I don't know, but somehow um, he needs more teeth or real teeth. So what he's gonna do? Um, I also like to change him color palette, you know, because it's more like a darker stuff. So he goes to the graves and he is, you know, digging up corpses and ripping out their teeth. He's also doing that with the poor, etc. <laughs> and then um, <clears throat> her mother starts to get sick. And, um, and she says, uh, well, the narrative says, they say everyone, diff um, di everyone has different ways of grieving. In Dr. Ludwig's case, he chose to focus on all the things he loved about her. Her beauty, her warmth, and her smile. She always did have lovely teeth. <laughs> and then one, one evening, one day, when she was passed away, oh man, <laughs> he is, uh, he's doing this with his dead wife. I mean, I must say, I'm all for gruesome stuff. I, lo I love body horror, etc. But this gave me a little bit unsettling feeling. Um, especially when, because there are have a, where once upon a time a loving family, and then he's doing that with his wife's corpse. <laughs> oh man! And then he runs after Alice because she saw everything. He says, um, "Hey, it doesn't look, it doesn't, it's not what it looks like." Uh, father is a doctor. Father is a doctor. You too young to understand what the doctor must do sometimes. You must forget what you have seen tonight. You must. And he's using liquid heroin. So he is the one that gave her the drug addiction. And she is now all loopy and crazy and she's messed up. And <laughs> this is dark. This is really dark. So she's waking up um, and um, her sister, uh, one of her sisters is by her side. And she's still ha acting a little bit, you know, happy go-go, not very depressive. And it's... That's the strange thing about this about this comic. Normally, when you know people have addictions, they are tend tend to be aggressive or depressive or dark, etc. But she is very happy. So the tone here is dark and quote unquote light at the same time, which confuses me a little bit. But I like that as well because that it's it's fresh, it's new, it's different. I like that. And um, <clears throat> she says. Can I ask you a question? She says, uh, of course you can ask me any question you like. Have you ever seen uh, Watch Father work? He says, no. All, um, he always locks the door to his uh, cottage. And she says, um, I used to hide in there all the time. I'm quite clever, you know. <laughs> I was always curious about, he, uh, about how he worked and how he made tea for people. It seemed like magic. One time, I saw Mother in his work cottage. But after mother had, you know, passed away. But father isn't that kind of doctor, Alice. <laughs> um, so uh, his sisters are going all crying, coming, you know, out of the uh, the institute. And then um, uh, Earl, who likes Alice, I guess, um, she says, um, hey, what's going on? Are you OK? And then the sister says, well, we need to get Alice out of there, Earl. It's not a good place. Not a good place at all. Uh, meanwhile, um, the, the headmistress is, um, you know, talking to um, I don't know, the, the, one of the doctors slash, uh, I don't know what they call him, but he is a crazy madman, you know, um, experimenting on people for reasons. And he loves roses or flowers. And he said, hey, she says, I got a new patient for you soon. It helps me and it helps uh, you and also the Institute. And um, yeah, so they are making some kind of a bargain with each other. And um, yeah, that leads us to the next issue because somehow, or somehow he uh, picks the rose and then he buries it into this cabinet in the dark. Now, maybe this is symbolism, you know, beauty being hide away. Um, not be seen again or captured or chained up, I guess. I'm just guessing. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it makes me think. In, 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 uh, and that's what I like. I mean, normally I just put those comics away and you know, don't think about it. But, you know, all this stuff is in here. It's, it's 
really messed up in a good way. And that leads us to, um, to the next issue pretty soon. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this uh, weird, wacky adventure of uh, Alice Ever After with a very dark twist. Um, see you later. Bye-bye.